This is how line sets were traditionally terminated up until the 1980s and into the 1990s, probably. Uh, this is aircraft cable tied into a clove hitch around the line set, and then three Crosby's or wire rope clips. Again, from the age of this, these are not your forged type. They are the malleable kind. Shouldn't have used them. This is one of those line sets that I am on my list to do a reconditioning. I haven't got to it yet. I've been working on them every couple of years, and then we've got about half of the line sets reconditioned. You can also see this. The cable is rusting, so we know the age of that is probably from the 70s, maybe 80s at the youngest. Time to be replaced in any case. The clove hitch is left over from when it was hemp rigging, which is using hemp or manila rope. And that was the traditional tie off to the batten from the hemp rope. You tie a clove hitch and two half hitches. This is another method of attachment for connecting your cable to your batten using a batten clamp. That's pretty common. We use batten clamps for a lot of other purposes, connecting battens to track and other materials. So this is perfectly valid. We have a shackle. The shackle is moused. The bolts are grade five hardware. They've been marked with some red marking material to identify if any of the bolts have slipped out of position from the last time they were rigged. There is a turnbuckle. I'm not real fond of this method. This is shortening my top height by the length of this turnbuckle. And you can see that up at the top, the turnbuckle is terminated to a cable with a swage. The swage has the tail and the tail has been protected with clear heat shrink. That's so you don't poke yourself on that. But now I've got all of this distance preventing my line set from flying out all the way to the grid. And that could potentially impede your full length of travel. The turnbuckle is moused on both ends, so it can't move. If I needed to adjust the turnbuckle to re-level it, I could do that. This line set was re-rigged by a local rigging company when we had a renovation of some of the facilities in 2018. All of the main curtains got replaced with IFR curtains, and all of the curtain tracks got replaced, and all their battens got replaced and upgraded. This is a sample line set that I've done the full rigging maintenance on. I've replaced all the cables. We've replaced the turnbuckles at the arbor and just gone directly to the arbor with a Nycopress swaged cable and a shackle to the arbor. And then at this end, we put the Nycopress swage on with the quarter inch thimble and we feed the chain into the thimble before we swage it. And that has this loose end of chain do two full wraps and then come back up here and connect via a shackle. This shackle, you can't see it, but it is moused, but only with a zip tie. In terms of doing any long-term mousing, I would never use zip ties because they get brittle and fall out. So if you are doing a long-term installation like this, which is almost of all of your line set rigging, you want to mouse it with some mousing wire. If you're doing a two-week show or a several-week show run and you want to mouse your shackles with zip ties where they're not going to degrade over a couple of weeks, then go for it. It's faster. It's easier. It's quicker. You can just cut it and snip it and go when you strike the stuff. But for anything that's permanent installation like this that's going to be there for several years, or longer, you need to use the wire mousing. This is a close-up of the way that I prefer a Nycopress swage. One's got a little more tail sticking out than I like. You can poke your fingers on that if you're handling it. One end of the chain is locked into the thimble, does two wraps around the pipe, comes back up, and then the shackle is adjustable to level the batten. And again, just remember to not lock this and these extra links uh, in between the shackle and the piece of chain. It has to be loose and free flowing. It can't be pinched. You can either do the shackle pin up or pin down, whichever works best with your shackle. I think these shackles, this size doesn't fit well through the quarter inch chain. Long term insulation and we don't want to use a zip tie as mousing because the zip ties can deteriorate over time with heat and become brittle and break, whereas a wire mousing does not. The disadvantage of the chain wrap is that if you are near the end of the pipe, you risk the danger of the chain wrap locking. The advantage of the chain wrap is that I can quickly adjust it left or right a little bit to get my vertical cable drop 100% perpendicular with that loft block up there. Because the last thing I want it to do is to have it becoming at an angle. And then as it reaches the grid, it has to shift or it turns into an extreme angle the closer it 
gets to the grid. The chain wrap makes for an easy adjustment left and right to be able to get that angle correct. But if you get yourself towards the end, you want to put in a keeper bolt like this that pinches the chains together so that it has no chance of slipping and sliding off the end of the pipe. Even this distance, it seems a bit extreme, like it could intentionally walk off that way. Because I'm under a foot from the end of that pipe, I want to put that extra bolt in there to be extra, extra safe. And you can see here we have a nicely wired mousing of my shackle. This is another method to attach your cable to a batten clamp, in this case a raceway clamp, which then attaches below the raceway to the batten. You can use this piece of chain instead of a turnbuckle to level your batten. The disadvantage here is that I have a single piece of chain that's carrying the entire weight. And as long as my chain has the same load rating as my quarter inch aircraft cable, that's fine. But what I get with the additional wrap is I get that wrapped around the batten twice. And now I've got two pieces of chain going to my single pick point and that spreads the load between the two chain drops and gives me a little bit of extra safety factor in the connection. You can't really do that if you're connecting from a Nyko press and thimble point to a shackle or batten clamp or both, but you can with a single chain. And again, always make sure any loose bit of chain link doesn't get pinched between your shackle or on, a, on another connective point. And for one more sample, here's the chain wrap method next to a batten clamp on a curtain track. Now I could have shifted that batten clamp over and connected directly to it. Problem there is you have to get your cables cut exactly right and or introduce a turnbuckle either at this end or at the arbor end in order to level it. I tend to avoid that method of going directly to your batten clamp with a shackle because I would rather have some slop in the chain that allows me to level things. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time with more technical theater content.